Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range to talk about my carry gun. One of the things I love most about working with you guys is the fact that you very rarely miss much. You keep me honest, you add comments to videos that I find to be very useful, and you catch every little nuance pretty much of every single video from the knife I'm carrying to the handgun I'm carrying. So if you guys remember a couple months ago, I made a video talking about the Sphinx SDP and it is my daily carry gun. But if you listen very carefully to what I say in that video, I say going forward, I will be carrying the Sphinx or a CZ type pistol. A lot of you guys have noticed in recent videos, I'm carrying this little guy. This is a CZ 75 P01 Omega. Nine millimeter, 14 rounds in the magazine, 15 with one in the pipe and I'm carrying it inside of my contact concealment holster. These are my standard concealed carry holsters. Contact concealment is local to me. They're here in Indiana and um, they do a good job. I like the way their holsters ride. And so that is my standard appendix carry, daily carry handgun, either this or the Sphinx or even sometimes another pistol, which I'll show you guys here in a few minutes, another CZ product. So the Sphinx and the CZ pistols functionally are nearly identical. The controls are the same, the gun works the same, the double action pull is very similar, the contour of the triggers are very similar. The only variance, and I have another one of these that's out at Cajun Gunworks right now getting customized, the only difference, and this is something new to me, is this Omega style trigger. The contour is slightly different than from what I like. I like that really heavily hooked CZ style trigger. But this feels pretty darn good and the Omega trigger is an improvement over the standard CZ trigger that's included in just their standard CZ 75s and PO 1s and PO 7s and PO 9s. So you also notice the sights on this bad boy are anything but standard. These are true glow TFX sights. I put them on myself. All of my carry guns have them. They're low profile. They have tritium in them, but they also have day glow inserts in here so that um, regular ambient light is magnified, giving you bright dots. Okay, you can probably see those in the video. Now you'll remember when I was talking about the Sphinx, the biggest problem I had with the pistol was the fact that it had Novak style sights that were not night sights. A couple of problems with the Novaks, okay? I, I, I don't like the style of sight. They're very steeply contoured to prevent snagging, although they seem to prevent snagging for going in the holster more so than they prevent snagging coming out, but they do a pretty good job of preventing the snagging on, on draw. To be honest with you, even with military standard height sights, I've never had a problem with sights snagging and preventing me from getting my pistol out. So that, that isn't so important to me. What I prefer is to have a right angle here on the front shelf of the sight, which allows me to actually run the action with a finger, okay? I can fully cycle the, the gun. It does have a round in the chamber, so I'm not gonna pop it out but I can run the gun by running it down my pants, by running my hand over the top if I have to. Um, I prefer that over the steep profile of the Novaks, which uh, are anti-snag. And I also don't like the fact that the Novaks don't have night sight capability. Now, I'm not gonna get into an argument over the worth or value of night sights. For me, for a carry gun, I want night sights on it. I'm not gonna say everybody needs them. Everybody likes something a little bit different. I love how these sights look. I like the dots. I like the fact they glow obviously at night. I like the profile, the very low pro. Um, some folks prefer a, a illuminated dot or a glowing dot on the front, nothing in the back. Other people want a three dot system. Some people want a U-shape back here like an M9 and a dot in the front. Whatever it is you like, that's fine. Sights are personal preference. Me, I want a three dot night sight arrangement. So until Sphinx gets that sorted out, um, I'm probably gonna be carrying this pistol primarily, but hopefully the, um, the night sights for the Sphinx forthcoming. The guys over at Chris keep telling me they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. All right, so anyway, I just want to do a little bit of shooting this afternoon with my CZ pistol, show you the guns that are in my carry rotation and answer any questions you guys might have about these handguns. Let's do a little bit of shooting. Here's the Sphinx in my contact concealment holster. All right, so this gun I do carry periodically, especially in daytime. I carry it appendix style, just like this. All right, move it over. These are new pants and I hate them. I have the belt loop right where I don't want it. All right, so that's how I carry the pistol. So the gun has CZ type controls and 
overall just a very ergonomic, easy gun to shoot. I've also found it to be extremely reliable. As you guys know, if you follow the channel, I've dunked this thing in the mud out here at the range, which this mud out here is heck on everything from AKs to whatever you stick in it. It's a pretty nasty mix of mud and water. Although right now it's pretty dry out here, so there's no mud tests until this fall and we go back into rainy season. Anyway, do a little bit of shooting with this, this uh, Sphinx SDP, then we'll talk about the, uh, the other CZs that are in my carry rotation. So that first shot is double action. You'll notice the hammer's down. And then I'm practicing firing that first shot and following up with a single action shot. Two different trigger pulls. Don't forget that with the double action auto. And I decock it. And then it's empty. All right, so I'll be honest with you guys, I don't typically carry a spare magazine. So I don't practice my reloads all that much. Um, I do practice reloads, but just not with every range session. Again, because I primarily just carry a handgun with a single magazine in it, which is why I like double stack handguns. The reason I can't get used to carrying things like the PPQ and handguns like that. Nine rounds just isn't enough. I prefer to have 14 or 15 rounds because of the fact I don't typically carry that spare magazine. All right, let's grab another CZ that you've seen in recent videos that isn't a compact style that I've also carried appendix style. Let's check it out. This is a full-size CZ75 SP01 Phantom, all right? I can get away with carrying this thing appendix style. I'm a big guy, I'm rather, rather tall, and with my contact concealment holster, I can actually get away with this thing uh, appendix style, and it's not horridly uncomfortable. It's uh, quite surprising. The only thing you have to deal with is this long full-size pistol grip because this will stick out and print, although it's not illegal to print in my state but I try to avoid printing where I can. I can carry it quite comfortably right here. I can still bend where I need to. It's not a problem, which again is surprising for a full-size handgun. My, uh, my True Dots TFX on there, all right, same sights. All the controls are the same between all these pistols, the SDP, the SP-01 uh, Phantom, and the P-01 Compact. The controls are right there. The only difference is, is the Sphinx does have ambi controls, all right? This, uh, this SP-01 does not. And the other thing that's kind of different about this gun, I love how narrow it is. It's real skinny, which gives it a really good feel. However, it's a polymer lower and the grip panels aren't replaceable. Okay, I do like being able to change the grip panels if I want to. My compact CZ allows me to change those grip panels. And you'll see in a near, uh, I'm sorry, in a, in a video in the very near future, you will see different grips on that handgun. I've ordered some uh, G10 grips for it. All right, let's do a little bit of shooting with full-size Phantom. I really love the way this gun shoots. Again, I'm decocking. One thing I really like about the CZ style pistols, problems I've had with guns like the VP9 that I've carried in the past, and even to some extent the Glocks, I have to be very careful with my long thumbs not to hit that slide stop inadvertently and cause either false locks or not to lock open the last shot fired. I don't have that problem with CZs. My fingers are long enough where I can actually hit the slide stop. A lot of folks can't do that. Their fingers are too short. I can actually get my long thumb up there but it also stays well out of the way when I'm shooting the gun so I don't have problems with, again, false locks or slides not lock locking open when the weapon's empty. All right, back to the gun that I opened the video up with. This is my CZ75 PL1 Compact, all right? And again, my contact concealment holster. I like these clips, guys. This is the reason I keep going back to contact concealment. First of all, they fit the pistols very nicely, very snugly, the guns won't fall out. But also, this clip is really handy because of the way that I carry my gun. All right, I can quickly put the gun on. Even while I'm seated in a vehicle, I can quickly take the gun off. 
However, once it is on and it clips over that belt, the gun comes out very positively. The holster doesn't move. I really like those holsters quite a bit. Now, let's go ahead and put the holster away. It's a lot easier to do with the gun in it. And let's talk about the gun. All right, so this is an Omega. So you can tell the Omega externally by a couple of different cues. First of all, look at that triangular style hammer. That's kind of a giveaway that it might be an Omega, as well as this trigger. It's contoured differently than a standard CZ style trigger with the, the hook on it. It actually looks more a lot like, or it looks more like a P07 or a P09 trigger, to be honest with you. But um, I was kind of not sure about it in the beginning, but it is growing on me. I don't really feel that much of a difference. It's more of a flat face right there where your, the pad of your finger engages the trigger. It really does feel good, and the trigger pull is very light. I won't say it's custom good, but it's pretty darn close to a custom trigger job, and it's right out of the box. Now, you can also tell the Omega from the markings on the slide. It's right behind the model number. You'll see a little Omega symbol. That's another way you can tell if one of the CZs is equipped with the Omega trigger. The controls are very similar to the SDP. You'll notice that it has an ambi hammer drop, just like the SDP, but does not have an ambi slide stop or slide release. But the controls are very familiar. So out of all three of these pistols, again, the controls are the same, they field strip the same, ergonomically they're very similar. So that's why I said in that video about the SDP that I will be carrying a CZ type or style pistol. All right, let's do a little bit of shooting with this bad boy. Again, I'm decocking it, practicing my double action first shot. My challenge steel target down there, that's a stake and shoot target. The ground's kind of soft and you can see it kind of working its way over. It probably will fall over here in a minute. I'll probably have to hammer it in. I just kind of stuck it in the ground today. These guys just point and shoot so well. I really love the ergonomics of the CZ pistols. All right, so as I mentioned previously, the reason I went to a double action auto over a striker fired pistol is because of that extra security layer that the double action gives me. Because I carry appendix style, when I'm drawing and practicing out here at the range, I don't wanna have an accidental or negligent discharge, and I don't wanna shoot myself where the muzzle's pointed. Right, it's bad enough to shoot yourself in the butt. It's really bad to shoot yourself in the front of the leg or anywhere near, obviously, your, uh, hmm, let's call it a burrito. <laughs> you don't, just don't wanna get shot there, okay? So the double action gives me that extra tier security without a manual safety. Again, to ready the pistol and then fire it, all I have to do is draw it and pull the trigger, and then the gun cycles, goes to a single action pull. The trick to a double action pistol and carrying it is mastering that first shot, right? That double action that pulls the hammer to the rear and fires the gun. Once you master that, and it's relatively easy to do, you don't have to worry about firing and missing on that first shot. Years ago, I used to hear people say silly things like, yeah, double action, I just use that, that first double action shot to cock the pistol, and then I start aiming on my second and third and fourth and fifth shot. It's like, ew, keep in mind, guys, learn how to use that double action trigger on the first shot. It's easy to do because you own every single shot you fire. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed coming out to the range with me this afternoon and listening to my rambling explanation as to why you see me carrying multiple different handguns here on the channel. So, to wrap things up, the CZ pistols you see me carrying are very similar ergonomically, field stripping wise, just overall to the Sphinx SDP, which I also like to carry. Now, the reason again that I've gone to carrying these CZ type pistols, and in this case just straight up CZ pistols, is because I am able to put night sights on them, all right? And I also kind of like the fact that unlike my SDP, which has replaceable grip panels, but you can replace it with the grip panels it comes with, which are rubber style grips. My little compact here has user replaceable grips and third party aftermarket grips, G10 grips in my case, which I have on order, are readily available, fairly affordable, 
and you can pick all sorts of different styles and colors for the handgun unless you customize it just a little bit. Now I will say that the grips on this handgun are good. Uh, they're very sticky. I won't say they're soft rubber, but they're a, uh, a type of rubber that is tacky. So it likes to stick to clothing, for example. I have my shirt tucked in. You'll see it uh, when I draw the pistol sometimes that uh, sometimes I actually get a hold of the shirt or the grips kind of get a hold of the shirt when I apply pressure to the grip drawing the pistol. And um, it's, a, it's a little too much. So that's one of the reasons why I'm going to some G10 grips. But again, overall, the pistols that you see me carrying are pretty much the same thing. They're uh, all in the same family. So I will look forward to the day Chris actually releases night sights. I hope they do. Uh, but if they don't, the more time I spend with this little guy, the more likely it is to stay in my holster. I really am getting used to this pistol. I like it quite a bit. I also have another one of these out to Cajun Gunworks, and I'll report on that when I get it back to the customizations I'm having done to that pistol. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can ask those questions down below. I typically stick around for the first couple of days after I post a video to answer any of the questions you guys may have. Also, if you'd like to support the Military Arms channel, swing by and shop at Copper Custom. It's our online store. It's the best possible way to support the Military Arms channel. Also, please check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators, brought them under one roof, and that is Full30.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll talk to you guys soon. <sighs> Loving me some 80 style double action autos. <laughs> See you guys.